Welcome to the NFL NFC North Futures preview video for the 2021-2022 NFL season. These numbers all come from Pinnacle as of August 30th. Fat guy, we're going to jump straight into the season win totals. Green Bay Packers, 10 wins, the over minus 167. Minnesota, 8.5 wins, the over favored at minus 148. Chicago at 7.5 wins. It's uh, pretty much even juice, very, very, very slightly on the under 7.5. And, and then the Detroit Lions take up the rear, 5 wins, minus 119 on the under. What do you think of the season win totals for the NFC North? Uh, it's oddly low, kind of, just at an outlook here. Detroit at five, it's arguably the worst team in the league, aside from Houston. I don't even arguably. Mathematically, the book believes Detroit is almost as bad as Houston, and uh, there's a lot of reason to feel that pessimistic about it. Uh, that being said, Green Bay, it's they're, I guess they're roughly, I'd say, 10.5 wins. If you were to extrapolate that minus 167 juice into a true win, I mean, that's something that's a problem we're going to have to tackle. It's going to be very difficult is figuring, figuring out the value of a win, considering it's dynamic and different for each team. It's a big big problem for Big, big Ryan and I. And Minnesota and Chicago, um, a little bit lower for this division, which I'm kind of surprised at when you look at it stacked up onto each other. It seems worse than other ones. And there is going to be more variance in it as they do play each other two times, but it's a 17 game season. So um, the correlation is just slightly less in a 17 game season than a 16 game season. So you are going to see a wider range in win totals amongst divisions. Uh, that being said, I do like season win totals over any of the other uh, futures that we're going to be displaying uh, solely because as Big Rye is going to mention, if he hasn't already, the minus 109 juice. It's uh, not as good as Pinnacle usually offers on a uh, spread bet uh, during the NFL season, but it is it is better than the other ones coming up, and it is better than usual local sportsbook odds of 11 to 10. And the one issue with the, with the season win totals is you do have to tie up your money for an entire season. So I do advocate for betting with someone trusted that where you don't have to put the money up and you can pay later so you can make the most of your resources. So just a little overview. If you are going to bet a spread at Pinnacle, 51.2% is the break-even point. If you're going to bet season wins, the break-even point is 52.1%, which is higher than that last 51.2% I mentioned. Uh, but those are really the two that are reasonable. We're going to get into Divisional Conference and Super Bowl as we go along. So I might as well dip into Divisional because that's where we're going right now. The juice that you're going to be paying on the average Divisional bet is minus 124, which translates to about a 55.3% break-even point, which is very, very difficult to hit. Uh, knowing that, let's take a look at the division odds. Fat guy, Green Bay Packers are the favorites at minus 160. Minnesota second at plus 253. Chicago in the third spot at plus 455. And Detroit pretty far behind at plus 2582. What do you think about well, this uh, the NFC North divisional odds? It's you know it's another thing we're going to highlight each and every video, but it's you know we got to bang that in there. We got to get you guys to understand where to look for value. It's a high uh, rake, or high rake. I, I use another word. It's always interchangeable. High juice at ten point five three percent, splayed out over four separate teams, with the lowest juice on the discount team, the Detroit Lions. Do I think they're going to win this division? No, but I do have to pay. Less than a 0.4% uh, uh, juice or commission, however you frame it. That's where I want to look first, you know. Is the price at 2582, uh, pl or sorry, plus 2582, uh, is it off? You know what I mean? That's where I want to look because I'm going to, I have a higher chance of winning if I only have to beat a smaller amount of rake. This, does, uh, this doesn't mean that you should bet on it, but it certainly means that this is where you should start looking first. Um, that being said, the more attractive one from a personal bias is probably a team with a rookie quarterback i know i don't like giving out uh personal biases but in my uh in my experience teams with unknowns and things that are hard to quantify like injuries tend to be more attractive wagers so chicago this would be another place that you do look for value although i do not like paying that uh 1.72 percent juice uh but let's look right at the top here green bay that juice is so top heavy you got to pay a premium for popular teams, and that juice is well, 
with just under six percent. That's just crazy talk. I, I, you know, I think Green Bay is going to win this division, but you couldn't, you couldn't talk me into paying that type of price. So as as we've been chatting, fact, I've done some research in the background, and uh, you did mention that you thought the season win totals were a little bit lower for this division, and I think I found the reason why. It's because the NFC North is going to be matched up against the NFC West which means that all of these teams have to play the Seahawks, the Cardinals, the 49ers, and the Rams. So I have a feeling that their win totals yeah. came down. What's interesting, though, to note is like uh, this might be kind of like a meta thing, and I don't, I don't know how much it actually matters. Uh, but if you were to consider betting conference and Super Bowl, maybe it's better to take a team like this from a division that's going to be playing tougher games because, you know, a team that might have 10 wins going into the playoffs might have uh, longer odds, but that's because they've had a, dif- a more difficult schedule than other teams. Like maybe that's uh, getting a little bit too far ahead of ourselves, but it's something theory. to consider. It's theory. We discussed theory here. I like that theory. On to the conference. And uh, one thing I want to highlight uh, as I have the last two is the average juice that you're going to be paying to make a conference bet is minus 160, which translates to a break even win percentage of 61 and a half percent, which is just astronomical. Like we're talking almost statistically impossible for the conference. We'll get onto the Super Bowl shortly. Uh, but knowing that it's so, so difficult, if you're paying an average juice of minus 160 to bet conference, we're pretty much telling you don't bet the conference, don't bet the Super Bowl because it's just going to be a losing effort over the long term especially when you have to take into consideration uh, the time that your money's held up and just the overall uh, losing aspect because of the juice. So, so after all of that doom and gloom, let's look at the conference odds. Green Bay Packers are seven to one and Minnesota Vikings are 17 to one Chicago 30 to one. And the Detroit lions are sitting pretty much at 50 to one to win the conference. Yeah, you're not going to see the the juice is heavy on Green Bay, even though I still believe it is, because it's 23%, 23.1% splayed out over 16 uh, possibilities. Uh, but it's still bad. I mean, it's over 2% here. And, you know, you got to pay a premium for the for the uh, the shiny car here, which is the Green Bay Packers. When you go down the list, do I think Detroit's going to do it? No. But look in the gap. It's, what, 0.37 here I'm looking at, which is just, you know, that's where you want to look first. Always look at the discount bin. Uh, like I said, I do have uh, Chicago is one of my, I don't know if darlings is the word, but I do think that they've, you know, kind of, they kind of have mum or bad news. Not that I'm a big fan of their coaching, but it is one that I kind of, I don't know. I kind of, I'm kind of interested in, let's say, but I still wouldn't be betting a conference bet considering the amount of juice over those 16 results. Uh, there are just so many better ways of doing it. And again, this matures a week before the Super Bowl. Well, there's the Pro Bowl, so two weeks before the Super Bowl. That's a lot of time to tie your money up, folks. And then on to the Super Bowl, which has a break-even win percentage of 62.2%. The average juice you're going to be paying, minus 165. So you're going to be paying on average minus 165. The book is going to be charging you plus 165 or making plus 165. So this is a very, very, like, can you think of a situation better for books than to get that money tied up for, what, four to five months? Plus, they only have to pay out minus 165 to the eventual winner. And it's going to be even less if it's one of the favorites that win. It's To me, it's just a crazy, it's just such a crazy setup that, like, we all agree to it. You're not a book at that point. You're a bank. You know what I mean? Like they can make. I'm not sure exactly on the financials of sports book, but they're allowed to put that money to work, and you aren't. Do you know what I mean? That's why it's so difficult to to bet at an over a counter or uh, or through the internet or offshore. Even though that's like I've probably said before, redundant. That's why you're best off betting with someone else who's trusted because tying up this resources that might even be worse than the juice that I'm coming to think about. You know, which is twenty four point five five. Splayed out over 32 results. Green Bay having shorter odds than most teams. You're still paying uh, uh, just under 1.5%. And a lowly 0.2% on the Detroit Lions. Not that I think that they're going to win the Super Bowl by any stretch of the imagination. But it is where I would look first if I were trying to ascertain value 
for the Super Bowl for for a Super Bowl future. So after all that said, Green Bay is twelve to one, Minnesota thirty one to one, <laughs> Chicago is sixty four to one, Detroit is a hundred and fifteen to one. <laughs> There's just not much else to say, right? It's the same thing as before. The Detroit Lions are going to be the best value. Whether they're going to win or not is very unlikely, but it's going to be the best value bet. Uh, Green Bay is going to have the worst value because of how their juice is set up. It doesn't mean that there isn't a possibility that there could be positive expected value on Green Bay. It's just less likely there there would be positive value compared to the line that you can get for the Detroit Lions. Thank you for watching our Divisional Futures preview for the 2021-2022 NFL season. The Fat Guy and I have a lot planned for the upcoming season. The picks video will be released every Sunday night. We will have our third annual Picks Against the Spread contest. We will be live for every Monday night and Thursday night football game. Our $5 a month YouTube membership will include our popular Discord channel, three weekly NFL betting market videos from myself where I take a look at the betting and money percentages to see if and where the value lies on spreads, over-unders, and money lines. The Fat Guy will have a new weekly segment called Ask the Fat Guy where he will discuss different topics from our upcoming book. So please consider clicking the join button to access our $5 a month YouTube membership and access everything the Fat Guy and I have to offer. Good luck to you in the upcoming NFL season.